Alright, so a little bit tighter. I know well. you can. Some of you have heard my testimony, yeah. um, bits and pieces. Uh, many of you have it, so um, I'm going to try to do it all in like my voice. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, about, uh, it was about 10 years ago that I started coming to this church. Um, Edgar had preached the gospel to me. <clears throat> I did well externally for a time, but I was full of pride hiding my sin. Uh, hands full shaking. If I did talk about my sin with the brothers, it was very, it was in a very general terms and never with any specificity, not to anyone. Um, and I struggled with assurance, with good reason. I was hiding a very secret sin. For two and a half years, I was living a sexually, uh, sexual, uh, in, in sexual morality, and walking according to the dictates of my own heart, lying to the brothers and pretending to be something that I was not. The day that Jimmy Texador died. I was crushed by the weight of my sin, thinking that I was aching in the camp, and that Jimmy died because I was hiding my sin. It moved me to confess the sin uh, in my life, but I didn't repent. I got put out of the church because of my sin, and I continued living a moral life for about two years. Um, I still didn't know whether or not I was saved, and I needed to know. But instead of turning from my sin and turning to Christ, I dove head first into the world. I consumed myself in drunkenness, in drugs, and sexual morality. I intentionally seared my conscience so that way I would not be convicted by the word of God that I knew. I tasted much of the world, um, but it left me empty. There were a lot of things that I wanted in the world, and it promised me many good and fulfilling things. I indulged, but I was left wanting. I partook, but it gave me depression and anxiety. I sought after my idols, but they were all false and left me with no joy. All I found was trouble, hurt, and worry. I thought that I could grab myself a piece of the world, of this world, and then return to the Lord with it, um, and I was wrong. A significant event happened in my life, um, the ending of a relationship that filled me with uh, worldly sorrow. I reached out to someone I knew, my old best friend, Nina Cummings, and she pointed out my sin, my repeated insanity, and she directed me to call Pastor Rick. So it was finally time for me to start working on um, my repentance. I called Pastor Rick, I told him that I was done living my life, uh, living life my way, that I was done with my sin. We began to meet up about every other week, and very soon Edgar started coming as well, uh, meeting up. They preached the gospel to me faithfully, pointing out the holes and errors in my thinking. I was doing all that I could to turn from my sin in my own strength, but I was having an incredibly difficult time. Um, I felt deep, uh, I fell into deep sin so many times over those few months. I kept failing over and over again, and I can remember thinking to myself on the drive to meet with Pastor Rick and Edgar, I keep sinning. I'm not improving. They're going to ask me um, how my week was, and if I tell them, they're going to tell me, Noel, you keep sinning, bro. You're, you're not taking these things seriously. Why are you wasting your time? Why are you wasting our time? Why are you wasting the Lord's time? You don't want the Lord. You're playing around. We're going to stop meeting with you. Um, I was really scared of that. Um, I, got, I got one... I got an hour every two weeks to meet and talk with someone about my soul, and I needed that so much. I didn't want to let that go. Uh, I, I had much reason to lie to them and to say, everything's fine, I'm good. But that is the very sin that got me to fellowship in the first place. So, <clears throat> so I determined that even if it means that they stopped meeting with me, that I would confess my sin. Um, and when I did, through many tears, uh, Pastor Rick said to me, Noel, I'm very encouraged. You didn't have to tell me these things, and you did. Uh, I thank God that God's not like us, that he doesn't think like us. I was trying so hard to repent and believe, but there was something very wrong in my thinking. I thought God would reject my coming to him. I knew Christ came to save men, but I didn't believe that Christ came to save me. But God is not like that. The word of God teaches that if you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. And I held on to that promise with all that I had. After several months, the Lord granted me faith and repentance. He forgave me of all my sins, and I was free because Christ was bound and suffered in my place. I found incredible strength in the Lord's uh, in the Lord, strength to fight sin, safety, and comfort in prayer, and a deep desire for the Word. I had a zeal to preach the, uh, to preach Christ to the world. God has replaced my heart and changed my desires. I've cut off and gouged out sin from my life, rejected many a great temptation. And am, a whole, and am wholeheartedly pursuing Christ, doing all that I can to make my calling and election short. Praise God, for I'm no longer a slave to my sin. I've not been perfect. Um, it's not been perfect, 
but I no longer look to self, but only to Christ and his finished work on the cross. Mm -hmm. I look to Christ. The world promised me much, but lied, and was unfaithful to me. But the Lord is faithful. Amen. And God does not lie, and he offers eternal life. And now, because of Christ, I get to partake in the work of, of Christ in preaching the gospel. I'm a peacemaker, reconciling men with God in Christ. And he has united me with, with you all, the body of Christ. And I get to worship the Lord with you all and partake in the sweet graces of God. Amen. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, as I run this race, keep watch of me. Don't let me go. I do firmly believe that Christ will keep me fast and that I am in the palm of his hand. But I must hold fast until the end. Brothers, keep me. Keep me in your, in your sight and especially in your prayers. I wish to continue to avail myself of the means of grace as much as is possible. And I need you. Do not be negligent, uh, negligent to remind me always of the hope that we have and of the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watchmen, watch out for me. And I'll be watching out for you because I love you. And I am so very, very grateful to the Lord for bringing me to where I am today to be united with you all in Christ. Glory to God. Join to baptize our brother Noel Perez. Woo! 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 Really grateful to hear his testimony. Grateful to have Noel back. I just enjoy the Lord to be able to do that. So, Noel. Based upon your eminent faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, repentant faith, turning from sin to trust Him alone, based upon your commitment to serve the Lord Jesus Christ as a member of Cornerstone Baptist Church, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism. Woo!